Welcome everybody. I think we're on. We're online here. I, uh, um, I'm excited to be here with you today. My name is Jim Spears. I'm the executive director of Art South Dakota. And it's, uh, it's great to be kicking off a new series of webinars. We've had a little bit of a break over the last couple months. And it's, uh, it's exciting for us uh, at Art South Dakota to, to get back into uh, offering webinars. We have a, a, a host of uh, topics in, in, in the works for this coming year. Uh, we'll share more with you about that uh, later. But today we have a great webinar in store for you. Um, but first, I just want to mention a couple uh, exciting things coming for Art South Dakota. Um, you probably heard a lot about this already, but we do have more discussions in the works uh, to share um, the, the news about our AEP-6, Arts and Economic Prosperity 6 study that we did in partnership with Americans for the Arts and then five South Dakota communities. Um, a, a very impactful study. You can find the results on our website if you haven't uh, seen them yet. Um, it just proves beyond all of the other things that the arts do in our lives and the power of the arts that they're also a, an amazing uh, economic generator in our communities. Um, so check that out. We have that study. Uh, we'll have more conversations about that in the future. Um, coming up in February, um, I believe it's on Valentine's Day. We are going to go up to the uh, state capitol again for Arts Day, where we'll share uh, news of the uh, AEP study, as well as other good things happening in the arts across South Dakota with our legislators. So that's in February. If you feel like driving to Pier, we'd love to have you join us. Um, then we have the next big annual statewide convening. It's been a couple of years now. It's hard to believe, but we have the next annual statewide convening. Our uh, arts conference will be taking place in June. Um, uh, I'm not looking at my calendar, uh, so Sherry's going to she's going to be mad at me if I give you the wrong dates here. But I believe it's June six and seven or seven and eight. Um, but that first weekend in June. So check that out. More information will be published on the big arts uh, conference here coming soon. And then also be on the lookout for, uh, oh, there we go. Sherry just posted, uh, yep, seven and eight. I was close. Thank you, Sherry. Um, also be on the lookout for the new arts journal. We're uh, working on um, year number two, our second annual arts journal, which will be published here uh, in the spring of 2024. Um, that's in the works uh, as we speak. So we're very excited about that. And then we're also working on a new series of uh, panorama videos featuring uh, South Dakota artists. Um, more on that as those come together, but that's another thing that will be released here this coming year. So lots of activity happening at Art South Dakota. Um, but today we're pleased to uh, be featuring the gentleman you see on your screen here, Lawrence Diggs. Um, uh, uh, South Dakota Humanities Council, Arts Ambassador, um, and a member of our board, I should say, first and foremost. Uh, we're so proud to have uh, Lawrence on our board. Um, he's a great friend, a uh, man about the world, musician and author, um, just a wonderful person to get to know. So we're pleased that he'll be presenting today um, just on the, uh, the importance of, of how the arts can build community. Um, Lawrence has worked recently in Millbank and in Sisseton, um, working uh, with youth, working with community members on the power of creative expression. Um, he's going to share his interactions. And I think that what's, what's, Lawrence and I have talked about this a lot, but what's, what's notable and, and most important is just how the arts are truly interwoven through every experience of our lives. Um, when you stop to think about the power of creativity, it, it truly in, impacts every aspect of our lives and our communities. Um, so we'll be talking about that today. And uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Andrew Reinhardt, and we'll get started. Hey, thanks so much, Jimmy. And uh, thanks again, uh, Lawrence, for being with us today and for all of you for, for joining for the conversation. Um, I, you know, I'm always jealous. Lawrence has the best Zoom backgrounds, you know, instead of my messy basement. He's, he always has something very, uh, very aesthetically pleasing. Um, but uh, just wanted to quick say a thank you to a couple of the sponsoring partners that make this webinar series possible, uh, including the South Dakota Arts Council and the Bush Foundation, as well as uh, for many of you on the call who are uh, donor members to Art South Dakota. You know, we really can't do this work without your financial support, but, but also it's so important to have 
have your names uh, as individuals and as organizations on our donor list when we go to peer for advocacy day as jim mentioned um, you know it really helps the legislators when they see how much support there is for the arts across the state in all of the communities across the state um, before uh, I forget, and I will also share this link in the chat, but tomorrow as a part of um, uh, Lawrence's ongoing program with the South Dakota Humanities Council, uh, brainstorming the human connection, uh, our very own Jim Spears and Sarah Larson from Art South Dakota will be joining Donna Merck from the South Dakota Art Museum uh, to kind of continue a lot of these conversations uh, with the Humanities Council uh, crew. And so I think this is a, a really good pairing. We thought it would be kind of nice to try to schedule these back to back to have a couple of different sides of the coin uh, and keep this conversation going. So we hope you'll consider joining tomorrow for that conversation as well. Um, and then today, uh, if you could, during the course of the conversation, please use the Q&A function to send your questions. It just helps us track all those questions, and then I will uh, share those with Lawrence as we go. Uh, and please feel free to use the chat function to uh, talk to each other, say hello, and do whatever else you need. Uh, if you have any technical questions, please let me know in the chat. And with that, I will uh, turn things over to Lawrence to start the conversation. Well, thanks, and welcome, everybody. I'm glad uh, you all can could join us today. Uh, this is going to be more of a conversation, even though you're, it's kind of hard because you can't speak to us directly. But I'm hoping as we start to speak that you will uh, jot down questions or put the questions in the chat, uh, because uh, I can go on and on forever. Those who know me know that is know that all too well. Uh, but it's really important for your input. If you have examples, if you have questions, if you have uh, disagreements or whatever it is, I like to uh, to wrestle with issues uh, rather than me being just a talking head, which everybody will forget everything I said in 15 minutes. However, if you will uh, join in and become a part of the conversation and wrestle with the ideas, uh, then everyone will benefit, not just you, not just me, but all the other people will, will be privy to your uh, particular insight. Uh, my kind of ongoing motto is, all of us will always be smarter than any one of us. So the more eyes you have on a subject, the better off we will all be. That said, I want to to uh, introduce you, if you haven't been already, to the the idea of how important arts are to us. Most of us, uh, well, I don't know, maybe most of not this crowd, but our society in general tends to put art in some kind of weird space where, oh, that's for those people. And even when we talk about art, we tend to think of art as something that is hanging on a wall in a museum. Or maybe those who are really liberal about art will say, my kid's picture that's on the refrigerator. But really, art is everywhere. It's all about uh, putting us together in a network. It's about the things that make it possible for us to see our human connection. So I want to introduce you to how important it is first, and then we're going to get into how more important and how more useful it could be. No matter what kind of civilization you look at in history, if we call those civilizations advanced, we usually find lots of of art. We can call a civilization advanced based on where the amount of, of um, discretionary income and leisure time they provide their citizens. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing you have to do is make sure that they have food and water. Everybody has food and water. And if they have food and water, then you go to shelter and clothing and stuff like that. And as you build those things, and as you have a reliable supply of those things, you now have some hours that in a day that you can do different things. 
And one of the things that people do quite often is make art. They may start by telling stories. They will advance to, uh, let's say, the old style of slideshows, PowerPoints, where they drew uh, paintings on the wall. That was the original uh, PowerPoints. And those were also accompanied by music. You know, people uh, bonded with music. And there's a magical thing about music. When we make music together, it releases something called oxytocin in the brain. And oxytocin is a bonding hormone. And what happens is when it, when it is uh, introduced into the brain, we kind of get a warm and fuzzy feeling for those who are around us and those who we are in contact with. A good example of that is when mothers breastfeed one of the things that happen is a flow of oxytocin, both in the mother and the baby. And this accounts for a lot of why mothers and children bond. Okay, so that's just a off the top of the head example of one of the ways that art uh, is a connector. Okay, so when we sing together, when we create things together, we have a sense of belonging to all of those who participate in that activity. So if nothing else, your community could be singing together. That does not take a lot of effort. You know, you don't have to have a special place. It could be in your living room. It could be in your park. It could be in your church. It could be in your school. But you do it together as opposed to go and passively just experience it. Right. But even when you passively experience it, when somebody else is playing, there is a certain amount of power in that because you're all mutually experiencing something and you're experiencing it at the same time. And that makes for a certain amount of bonding there. But the real thing happens when you sing together. That's why people sing in church. Those hymns that you sing in church, uh, they are a bonding mechanism. By the way, by the time you finish that, there's a certain amount of togetherness that happens. Now, it's not like something like you stuck a fork in a, you know, electric socket. It's not that kind of real, you know, power jolt. But it is, it's subtle enough and it's deep enough that you start to feel a connection with people, right? So that's one thing. When you go to, let's say, a school uh, game, why do they have cheers? Well, those cheering is just another form of singing, really. I mean, not very much in tune, but it's a kind of it's a kind of uh, singing, and you're doing it together. And when people do that kind of thing together, they feel connected. Why do people sing national anthems? You know, it's to bond people. It's to get us to feel like we're all part of something bigger. So I mention all of those examples to say. That's an ex just an example of building a community with art. We tell stories. We like to tell stories. And those stories connect us, you know, and each uh, iteration or each, each changing of the story brings some new excitement and some new twist. But when we have a, a mutual story, especially when we learn those stories from ch childhood, what happens is we have a mutual reality that's built on those um, on those stories. The sense of what is fair and the sense of what is good, what is bad, what is you know what is acceptable, what is unacceptable. How we can get along with people. What should we do in X situation? And we build certain expectations of how we should act together through our mutual stories. Now, they may be actual stories where somebody recounts a deed, or they may be myths, things that we make up from whole cloth, or somebody tells that from whole cloth. And often those real stories turn into myths because as people tell them, <laughs> the story changes and give it a few uh, turns or iterations, and there's nothing <laughs> like the story that began because everybody keeps piling on and changing it. Uh, I'm doing a, a a a program now, a little series where we're doing putting stories to music, and as I write 
as I investigate various stories, uh, myths and, and ghost stories, some of them, one of the things I discovered is that as the story traveled, it changed, you know, and little by little it changed to the point that even a name changed. But the original story, somehow there's a thread to it, but it's kind of like diluting milk, you know, the more you put, add water to it, the more, there's always a little bit of milk in there, you know, uh, but the more you dilute it, the less it tastes like milk, you know, it's, it turns to something else or, or your Kool-Aid or whatever it is, the, the dilution factor happens and people change. And sometimes it's not water. Maybe they mixed uh, some chocolate with it. So the, the original, just regular milk, the more chocolate you put in it, the less like that original milk it tastes or vice versa. If you have chocolate milk and you start putting lots of milk in it, pretty soon it's not all that chocolatey, you know, but it's still milk. You know, so these are examples of of how stories can define us, because each time we change the story, something current happens, something of our current self is added to that story. So we we put some of ourselves on the story. It reminds me of a, another story uh, about a park bench that was made out of a thick log. And over a hundred years or so ago, there was a, quite a dimple in that log, and it was very shiny. And so what we learned from that is that every person who sat on that bench, they gave something and they took something. And the, the bench gained a story, and they gained not only the bench, but all those other stories they had been translated and transferred to all of the people. So all the people who sat on that bench over hundreds of years had picked up a little bit of the people who were there before them and picked up something of the bench. And I like to think, because I, I, I see evidence of it, that our interactions do somewhat the same thing. When we tell stories, when we play music together, when we do anything together, we always take some and leave some. We cannot interact with each other except that we, we take some and leave some. So every person that you've ever met, you are part of them and they are part of you because what are we if, we're, if not our histories? You know, so there's always that exchange. Now the question is, how do we exchange? You know, what do we exchange? And that, that's where art comes in. I'll digress for a moment to, to expand on what art is, because then that will give you some kind of idea of how big this thing is. There's almost nothing in your life that is not art. Think about that for a minute almost nothing, right? If you are in a house, that's art. You may take it for granted, but someone had to design that house. Inside that house, you may have art on the wall, but all your curtains, those didn't magically happen. There is no set pattern where it has to be that way. Someone had to design that. The, the, the design on your carpet or rug or your linoleum, that is art. Someone designed that. And not only did they design it to look nice, they designed it for function, right? So art is not just, it's pretty, it's functional. The, the, the color of your room and the design on your carpet really shapes your mind. A good example of that is, let's say to take a real bold example, take a room in any room in your house, preferably one that you're in a lot, and just for kicks, paint that room a bright red. Right? Now, at first, it will seem exciting, but invariably, you will become depressed if you stay a long time in that room, okay? You take things like prisons where they paint everything gray. That is a depressing color over time, right? And it's a kind of, of, of a color that 
I'm not sure why prisons still do that because we already know from studies that if they paint the, the colors brighter that you know and and different and have something interesting for the eye to see people become a little bit more let's say creative and so when you have an issue maybe you're going to spend a little bit more time trying to figure another way out other than punching the person who you feel has offended you in some way i would say that everything kind of operates like that i mean take for example cars and it's almost laughable that we don't think of cars as art but i would say that many people buy a car a car more for how it looks than how it operates you know they don't know and sometimes don't want to know how the engine runs what they really want to know is how do i look when i'm sitting in this car you know and as a result a lot of the design has gone into the art of the car. What's the shape? What's the color? You know, and people, you know, they go. You go to a a, a watch people in a, a a car room, and the longest discussions are about what color will, will would you like? What what color will the interior be? Uh, will you have like the the you know certain amenities? that have more to do with how it looks than its function, okay? The shape of the car, the, the interior uh, colors and, and, and the, the feel, all of that is art. Now take, for example, your clothing. Every piece of clothing you wear is art. And somehow we know that because we put a lot of attention into how do I look in this, you know? But we, we somehow we separate that out and don't think of it as art, but it is art. It is art. And your ability to, whether it's makeup or jewelry or the clothing itself, your ability to accent that has a lot to do with how you feel and how others feel about you. When you start putting all those things together, we have a lot of things that we depend on that has to do with art. So when we turn that around, what we can see is that art can be a tool to bring us together. So what kind of art could we use? Well, let's start closer with our the things that we, we interact with all the time. Let's Think about our homes, right? Now, you probably spend more time in your home than others do, but you could use your home as a place where people gather. And when they do gather there to do art, uh, whether it's singing together, telling stories together, or just being together, how you decorate your house will have a lot to do with how people feel when they're in your house. Do they feel peaceful? Do they feel uh, energized? You know, what what is their feeling? Just just the the ambiance, the the feeling, the, the atmosphere in your home will have a lot to do with how people feel. And human beings are feeling beings that think, not thinking beings that feel. That's a very important take home here. Humans are feeling beings that think, not thinking beings that feel. How you make people feel in your house will have a lot to do with what happens when they show up at your house. So just using your house as a way to, to communicate and connect, not just with people who are visiting you, but your family. How you arrange your house and what colors you paint your house and how the rooms connect with each other have a direct effect on how your family interacts with each other, right? Now, to take that one step further with your family still, what kinds of art you can do or will do with your family can provide that bonding that I talked about right at the top of this 
uh, presentation. So you could make a regular habit of doing art, even if you're just two people, even if you're two people. And if you're one person, invite somebody okay, to do some kind of art. Now, often we think, oh, art has to be, let's say, expensive. Well, first of all, you have a phone, likely, not always, but you might have a phone that takes a picture. So that's something that you probably, I don't have one, but many people have that kind of phone that can take a picture. I have too many cameras. I don't use my phone for that. But, but that said, let's say you don't have a phone. Let's say you have a piece of paper. Right? Now, the other thing is, if you're watching this, you probably have at least access to a computer. So you can find different things that people are doing with one piece of paper, but you can do it with, uh, let's say, um, uh, scrap paper or throwaway paper, even magazines. You can do very interesting things by folding the paper and make some very interesting art limited only by your desire to make art and your creativity, which will build if you do art. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'm not that creative. You're not if you never do anything, you know? But just the fact that, you know, if you can speak a language, if you can find point A to point B, if you've ever had a problem that you had to figure out and you figured it out, you are creative. In fact, if you're not creative, I'm probably not talking to you because you're dead already, because you have to be creative to stay alive. Life does not, it, there's all kinds of environmental resistances. So you're always having to make some kind of shift. I believe that you're creative. And I believe that I can show you that you're creative. But that said, those are things you can do with another friend, if you only, if you live alone, if you live with two people, make a regular time that you do some kind of art. Even if you're not making something, maybe you wanna first just go out and sit in a park and watch things. You will be looking at art. Maybe a human didn't do that, but humans get inspiration from that. And so you, and you will see humans walking by with Probably, you know, there are some parks that maybe nobody goes but you. But most people, there are other people in the park. So you can see what other people are wearing. What kind of art are they wearing? You're surrounded by art all the time. Okay, so now how do we use that to build our bigger community? Let's go one step further out of your house and think about what could your community do together? One thing you could do is write poetry. Poetry is a kind of art. So you can write poetry, and even if it's just getting together in your living room, because sometimes people say, oh, I don't have, we don't have a place to have a, a, a poetry jam or something. You have your living room. You probably can uh, get the use of a library if you live in a larger town or a place, even smaller towns that have libraries, and maybe they're open only three days a week, but that's because that's all the service that they get, you know, that's, you know, but if you ask, there's a good chance that they say, oh yeah, we could open on Tuesday, you know, we could open on that, you know, for that special thing. If you say, hey, we would like to have a, a, a poetry uh, presentation and bring, everybody brings some poetry. Uh, you may think, oh, my poetry is not that good. We could say that about any kind of poetry, but we can also say any kind of poetry is good. If you make it, if you like it, it's good. You know, I don't need to be the judge of the quality of your poetry. You need to be the, the judge of the quality of your poetry. You need to share it, you know. And if you think it's good, it's good. If you don't think it's good, make it good. Do something else. Make it better. Work on it. And you listen, listening to other people, you'll get new ideas. Read some other poetry. There's all kinds of ways. So a poetry uh, jam, if you will, that could be a way that you could share um, some art. You could might do something like, uh, there are people who are, are um, good at helping you to design a mural, right? 
there's lots of blank walls in many towns and you should get permission from people first instead of just painting their wall. But sometimes you have a blank wall, you know, you can do a, a mural and, uh, you know, we can, you know, try to find you some people who will help you to design it. But the important thing is that you have something to do with it, that your community gets together. You get the one person who's the, the professional artist to come and outline things and just have a discussion in your community about what would you like to have in some wall that's blank. And most, like I say, most communities, they have at least one blank wall. And if it's a business wall, nothing draws attention to your business like a mural. And nothing, uh, in, in, in you know, like makes a connection with your community more than a mural that your whole com community came together to create. Okay. Another thing people can do is have some uh, thing like uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, use tile to make things like, uh, again, murals, uh, uh, mosaics. You can do mosaics even out of broken plates. But often at thrift stores, they have lots, you know, some actual one piece of tile here, two pieces of tile there. Collect those and you can use those to make designs. And if everyone did something like that, even just in their yard, uh, then pretty soon, you'll start to get ideas. Maybe you put that up and you take it out later. But the idea is to think of things that could beautify your community. And when you think of those things and when you come up with those things that, that can beautify your community, then you can do make those things together five, 10, 15 years down the road, as especially when you include everybody in your community from the little kids to the big kids every time people look at that or your mural or whatever you made together that says we are a community we did that together right and the more things that you can do together the more connected you feel i mean try it whether you can start out in, with with just whoever's living in your house and see if it, doing more things doesn't in most cases, can bring you together, you know, but you can never, you know, people say, oh, it's communication is so hard. Yeah, if you don't do it, and if every, and if at every resistance you find, you get mad and start to bring out your, you know, axe or something, you know, but if you just, you know, if you just say, okay, it's not working right now, but let's say, what did I misunderstand, you know, start there. And if you have something that's neutral, or let's say not controversial to discuss like oh let's make uh, um, a um, a um, what do you call those things where you paste the paper on you know I'm, I'm blanking on the word for it now but if you just get, cut out pieces of paper and stick them on another piece of paper and one person says oh I, I, collage that's the word I was looking for if you can make a collage together you know you can take even like a large newspaper and cut out other pieces of paper, even the other pieces of newspaper and, and you know, 50 cent worth of glue. And you got an art project. Now it can get much better than that, but you can start there and you can do things. And it it isn't the, it isn't the thing, it's the process. It's the process of doing something together that you create something together. And you may think after that, oh my God, that's terrible. But you can laugh about it and then go make another one. You know, it's it's it doesn't have to be you know like museum quality in order for you to to get some benefit out of it. Just the fact that you're doing it has great benefit. I'm going to stop for a moment to see if there are any questions or anything like that. Well, one one question um, I would have, Lawrence, is you know, for a lot of a lot of the folks in attendance are are artists and are often trying to find ways to take that practice that they usually do 
internally self-expression in their own studios and find ways to connect that with the community. You know, what are a couple of, of good examples? You know, one of them that pops to mind for me is just even what you did with the elementary school in Millbank. Um, and so maybe that's, you know, one good case study, but are there some other, uh, if you could talk just a little bit about that and some of the other um, kind of projects you've seen where artists have taken their work and then successfully integrated community into it. Okay, great question. Um, the South Dakota Arts Council has a art artist in residency uh, program, and I would suggest you uh, contact them and see about becoming part of that if you are a person who has artistic abilities. Um, see about being part of that. Now, once you're part of that, then you you have some support they also have to put some skin in the game, but you have some support from organizations like schools, uh, churches, nonprofits, where you can go and spend a two, one or two week residency where you can work with people every day to create something, okay? And you can bring your expertise into the project. Now, the, the project that uh, Andrew spoke about, for me was one, I, well, one of the, I'm an artist in residence, and I, I did a poetry uh, residency in elementary school in uh, Millbank. And at the end of that, we actually brought the kids and their parents to see their, you know, the, the poetry that they did. And they put poetry with drawings, right? The, the kids couldn't get enough of that, you know? It's like, I remember there's one case where the 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 parents there were there was a, a a program and the parents were saying okay well I, you know the program's over now so let's go and one little kid came in to get his sister and he said dad says time for us to go now you have to come and he said no 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 you guys go and I'll get a ride a ride <laughs> you, you know <laughs> where but she didn't want to leave you know she had she was still doing her project and she had she had done three or four times what the project was about. She just wanted to keep going. And then, so the dad finally came in and got her. No more than 15 minutes, that girl was back. <laughs> she had sneaked away and had come back to do our project. And uh, not so long ago, I'm standing in a in a uh, parking lot and this is other little girl is saying, hey, Mr. Daddy, Mr. Daddy. Because she remembered me from a... Uh, one of these uh, art residencies, right? So I know from that that art makes an impact. Now, how do you, other than the, the residency, I mean, that's a thing. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, diminish that at, at all. That's a good pathway. And you get paid, you know, and they make sure you get paid. So that's a good thing. But you can, you can use that to whatever kind of art you do, one of the first things you can do is do it where people can see you do it. Right? A lot of us we we create like we're you know we have like a magical formula we you know and almost like a secret, and you don't have to do everything you do, but do some kind of art. I have a friend who she's into uh, um, uh, plain air painting. And it's amazing that, she, you know, when she goes out and sits and plain air is when you just sort of paint out in the open. It's not like a, a February in South Dakota kind of activity outdoors, but, it, you know, it's the thing. So you you take your paint and your easel or whatever you do, and she sits out and she's painting. And invariably, kids will come up and, and just stare and just say, what are you doing? You know, and then, you know. Two, she's got two or three people, kids who just decided right then that that's what they wanted to be was an artist. You know, they saw her like doing what she does. And so one of the things that we can do is include young people in, even if they come over from time to time to see your studio, you know, have, them, have the parents, if you have even your relatives, any kid that, you know, I, I like to always include parents in those things because especially if I don't know the kid that well, it, it all, I just feel more comfortable because the parent knows the kid, you know? But I, and then there there are, are uh, children's groups like the, or, or situations like, okay, like LSS 
has like some kind of of uh, group homes and there are other group homes. And if you can make your destination to go there or have the kids come to your shop, if they can, you know, that works. I work with some other artists and we go to places like that to, to I will do poetry. They, they are people who actually play in the symphony and we go together at these places and do art. And, you know, you, you wouldn't think that a junior high schooler would be interested in classical music, but when they see these people play up close, suddenly they're interested and they have all kinds of questions. They're all, all feet in, you know? And so bringing the art to people, not having it as a secret, that is, I would say foundational. Now there's lots of other, you know, nuances and other things you can, little tricks you can do. But basically the biggest thing is wanting to share the art. And then when they're, when, you know, if you are a musician, you can do pop-up concerts any place. Because by the time they call the cops, you're already gone, you know. So you can, you, you know, but if, you know, there are parks that as long as you're not like setting up to do a heavy metal concert with you know ten feet of speakers, I mean, you know, ten stories of speakers or something like that, you can go out and if you sit down and play your flute, you will get an audience, but you will get rare. You will almost never get a complaint, especially in the park. You know, and there, and if you look at some of the parks, they have like little nooks and crannies, you know, it's like a, off to the side where there's like for picnics or something like that. Take one of those spots and spend 10 or 15 minutes just playing whatever you play. You will be beautifying the city. Busk, go downtown or, or a place and stand on the side of the road. I mean, if you're not obstructing traffic and you bring something to people, then, you know, People will start to appreciate, oh, this person can help us, or this, this person brings something to the community. If you are an artist, you can buy two, three bucks worth of chalk. And on a Saturday or summer morning and you know, uh on a weekend or something like that, just any kid who wants to come, come and draw on the sidewalk. What? You know, I mean, if people are upset about chalk on the sidewalk, well, they got more problems than chalk on the sidewalk, you know. So that, you know, you can do things like that. In some towns, they actually block off streets so that, you know, one or two blocks and every kid comes out. Look, it's your kid. It's your community. Why wouldn't you, you know, why would you object? People don't, you know. So I would say foundational is wanting to share your art, appreciating the art yourself. Appreciating, appreciating the power of art yourself. You cannot find a, I have not found any society, any civilization that we know of and think of as, as, of, as advanced that did not have lots of art. That's how we remember them. We remember almost nothing else about those civilizations other than their art. You have any other questions? Yeah, uh, one other that has come up is is from someone that knows of uh, that you do a little bit of work with uh, incarcerated folks, um, and uh, just thought that might be kind of interesting to hear about kind of creating a little bit of that community in obviously a very different realm um, uh, of folks, but of how you found that impact um, uh, in creating a, a spot where there often isn't seen um, to be as much community. Right. When we think about uh, prisons, we don't think about community, but almost by definition, they are community because they're, they're maybe a forced community, but they are a community. And one of the things that they you know, that typically happens is a lot of the people who come there have communication issues. It's hard for them to, to say what they feel and to hear what and feel what others feel that almost foundational in a, you know, in a, in a prison setting, because almost by definition, the people who are there are there because they don't get it, you know, so to speak, you know, that they don't have those connections with others. So when I went started to work in the prison, one of the first things I asked, and I'm, I'm a volunteer, I'm a Buddhist monk, and I go into the prison, to, uh, you know, at first, I just went as a Buddhist monk, but I said, look, look, we can, it's about doing things. It's not about, you know, talking about Buddha, you know, I, I'm not interested in that. What do these people need? What do these brothers need? 
you know, what, what are they lacking? You know, where are they hurting? You know, and you guys tell me, not the, the administration, you, the, the incarcerated people, you tell me, what are you lacking? And one of the first things that came is art. We don't get to do art anymore. Ever since they, many years ago, I mean, you know, we're talking decades ago, they had a riot. And since then, they cut out the art program then. And since then, they hadn't brought it back. Well, we brought the art program back. Long story short, we are yesterday, it was, I think, the eighth annual art show in Aberdeen began. Okay, we'll have a we'll have a reception where we will have a program later, but that 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 simple uh, art project has blossomed to an annual art show, and now a traveling art show. We'll be going around the state and maybe even to other states. We've gotten queries about taking it to other states, so that says that not only are they making an impact inside the prison, they're making an impact outside of the prison. And interestingly enough, we have one of the projects we have is called Cards of Compassion. And one of the things we do with the Cards of Compassion is we make hand, I don't, the, the brothers do, they make uh, uh, handmade cards, all the cards. We've done over 7,000 of those cards that we give to people for their birthday, their mother dies, homie gets shot or something like that, or they get parole or get denied parole, something where we hear that that there's an emotional response and we send something just to let people know that others care about them. One of the most powerful things we've ever done. One of the most powerful things is just a piece of paper and some drawing on it. But the fact that someone took the time to make a handmade card and give it to them and it's theirs from the other brothers in the prison it's a powerful statement to people for people who sometimes never hear from anybody on the outside sometimes even the person that they went to jail for rather than that person goes to jail even that person doesn't write call or visit right and they get this card that means a lot right but probably the most impactful thing is the is the the ability or the opportunity to do the art itself. It's something that when you get to create, something changes in you, you know. And if you are an artist, you know you probably have felt that the art has probably changed you more than you have changed the art, you know. So, so those are those are the kind of things that that you can you can do with art. So instead of just having the art for yourself or for your paying customers, you have a chance as artists to impact the community in ways that other people cannot. We can talk about, you know, the, you know, social media and TV. You are the media. You are the media. You are the people who have the power just in your paintings and just in your sculptures and just in your music and all the any kind of art that you do, put a message in your in your art. You know, if you do music, put a message in your music. And it doesn't have to be words. Words are kind of weak, actually, compared to all of the other power that you can bring. So whatever kind of art you do, think of what can I say that can benefit humanity through my art right if you do if you take a picture what can this picture say right now maybe if you haven't been thinking this way it might seem like a tall order i challenge you to try it i challenge you that when you look through the lens of your camera what do you see you know can you can you find something that tells a story that other humans need to hear you know, can you, can, if you paint, can you imagine something that when someone sees that, that image, that they, that it resonates with them? Can it give them some kind of peace, right? If we want to, we take something like peace. We've got a few kind of major wars that are threatening to bring on World War III right now. But if we want peace, we have as artists, we have the power to influence peace because we can make 
art that helps people sort things out. Of course, it's helpful if we sort them out ourselves first, you know, because so that requires some inner reflection. It requires personal growth. I mean, you can't say something, you, you know, that you don't know, you know, it's like, you know, it's, it, it, but if you change, if you start to experience, if you start to just give, if you start to interact with people, if you will start to learn things, and now you have subjects for your art. You know, too many people who say, oh, I, I'm not creative. I don't have nothing to say. Get something to say. Go start living. You know, if you have nothing to say, that means you're not living. Because if you're living... We, you see something and you experience something that I didn't experience just because you're alive. And I can learn something from your eyes. I can learn something from your experience. I can learn by you sharing with me. Others can too, you know? So share it with other people. That becomes your art. You can make, you can make a difference. And I challenge artists to make a difference. And in that, in the, process of trying to make a difference you will bring unity and you will build community you have any more questions could be right oh we get yeah we're actually we're actually running up on the, the end, of, <laughs> end of time here but um uh just want to hope not the end of time well not the end of end of time the end of our time <laughs> together time. now yeah um, but you know thank you, thank you so so much lawrence you know i think that it was a great conversation especially with you know just art is a communication tool. And I think a lot of it that really strikes me is just is is starting small and finding ways to create those shared experiences. I think often as artists, we have um, we have very grand ideas. And sometimes it can be it can be hard to remember that sometimes just a very, you know, the 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 creating letters with the students in Millbank, the, the postcards in the prisons and uh, for the incarcerated folks, you know, sometimes very little what seem like minor projects to an artist brain that is used to trying to think of as big as of an idea as possible can be unbelievably impactful and a really good way to start building that community organically and not forcing something to happen to a community, but building that community uh, from kind of a seed up. Um, so really, really want to say thank you so much again uh, for your time today. And I'm just going to put this back on the screen and I will definitely share the link with everybody. Uh, but if we want to continue some of this conversation with Lawrence tomorrow alongside Donna, Jim and Sarah, uh, really encourage you to to jump on the session tomorrow with the Humanities Council. Um, and thank you all so much for joining today. We'll send out the, um, the recording and some of the links that we've discussed. And uh, just want to say thank you again so much, Lawrence, for your time today and, and good luck luck traveling up to, to North Dakota now for your next your next events this week. Next adventure. adventure. Yep. And I, I really want to emphasize what you just said about starting small, because a lot of times we think we have to do some grand thing. But that's a way to get connected with your community. And now those people will start to support your art. That's the important thing, because they will, we have, as artists, we have to bring it to show people that art is important to them. If, if people don't recognize that art is important, that's on us. We have to do that. Great. Well, I, I can't think of a, a better place to end than that. So thank you all so much. And uh, we uh, uh, watch for more webinars coming soon. And thank you for everything that all of you do to help keep South Dakota creative. And have a great day. Okay. Bye.